Is it possible to make your own thermal paste right at home using only things you can find in a backyard? Well, I have no idea, but today we're gonna find out. Thermal paste generally consists of two basic parts. There's a base and there's some type of thermally conductive material. And so we have two tasks ahead of us. First is to find a thermally conductive material. Somewhere, you know, somewhere out here. I have a hypothesis that we can use some of this. Well, not just dirt, but what's inside of dirt. And that's where this comes into play. This, of course, is a neodymium magnet. And what we plan on using this for is to extract those earth metals that that are scattered around inside of dirt right on top of this magnet. Kind of feels like I'm uh, sifting for gold. So if I move this paper towel that has dirt on it, you can see some of the dirt wants to stay where the magnet is, which means this little chunk of dirt right here contains some amount of metal. Ideally, I would get uh, like, like finer flakes. Let's try this again. I'm gonna try to grab some finer dirt. Okay. Oh my gosh, I forgot I was using a metal spade. Oh! This magnet's so strong. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was so dumb. Oh. Alternatively, we can also just toss our neodymium magnet into the dirt itself. There we go. That kind of looks like a little ice cream sandwich. Mm. And now that gives us our thermally conductive material. There we go, that's a start. But like I said, that's only half of the equation because thermal paste is made up of that thermally conductive material as well as a base, something to hold it all together. And while typically silicone is used, I don't think we're gonna be finding any of that back here. One of my initial thoughts was to extract sap from trees. Let's see if we can find some sap. Unfortunately, I don't think it's the right time of year for sap to naturally be forming. Honestly, just trying to see if we can get lucky. Hmm. Any sap there, big old tree? Now, I'm not convinced we're gonna be able to find any sap per se, but I do have another idea. These acorns have been falling um, from these giant oak trees. And the thing about acorns is I'm pretty sure they contain oil inside of them, which I know is not gonna be quite as good as silicone as a base, but with our limited options, maybe we can extract oil from an acorn and use that as our base to sort of bind all of our iron together. But now the question is, how in the world do you extract oil from an acorn? <laughs> Surely there's gotta be something good in there, right? So now we're gonna place these acorns inside of a food processor to see if we can like crush it up real small. Will it work? Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty excited for this part because I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. But so here's our acorn dust, I suppose. You might be saying this is very clearly not oil. And I agree with you. The plan here is to try to extract the oil from these crushed up acorns with peer pressure. Peer pressure. <laughs> we're gonna peer pressure these acorns. Drink, drink, drink. Just kidding. What we're going to do is we have this tube. We're going to put, I guess we're gonna put this in here, something to stop solids but let liquids through. And now carefully pour our acorn mush into the other end of the tube. There we go, a little something like that. Go ahead and start squeezing. I'm really hoping something comes out of this. I think we need more acorns. So I got a lot more acorns. Okay, let's try this again. Man, this is tough. Okay, come on, come on. Oh, no way. Oh. We got a drop. Can we get another? Maybe that's all we need. Oh my gosh. So we managed to get oil out of acorns <laughs> with peer pressure. It's not a lot of oil, but we don't need a lot of thermal paste. So maybe that'll do. Okay, so we have our oil and we have our iron, potentially iron oxides, or potentially just magnetic dirt. Now, I'm a little concerned that our dirt is too coarse and I want it to be finer. So I'm gonna try to like, crush it up a little bit. Now, the true test of all of this is going to be, of course, how well our backyard DIY thermal paste can compare against real thermal paste inside of a running computer. Well, we're not gonna outperform like actual thermal paste, right? That'd be crazy. But honestly, if we can let the computer run with our DIY thermal paste without it overheating at any point or even like thermal throttling, that would, that would be a huge win. All right, check that out. That is much more fine. So now, if we take our iron and our tiny little bit of oil, not the fine stuff. Okay, just like that. Some wet, wet dirt, <laughs> but particularly wet 
iron oxide. It actually looks kind of like thermal paste. Like I've seen things look far less like thermal paste and still keep a CPU cool. <laughs> Maybe it low key just looks like wet dirt. <laughs> which I guess is mud. Maybe it just looks like mud. Uh, maybe I'm fooling myself. <laughs> but it's not about what it looks like. It's about how well it performs inside of the computer. So it's time to put it to the test. All right, our test bench right now. What is this rocking? We have an Intel Core Ultra 9 285K underneath it. And currently with normal thermal paste applied, it looks like CPU temperature while idle is at 30 degrees Celsius. So if we go ahead and figure out the temperature under load, well, we can go ahead and run Prime 95 and we should be able to see this number jump up. All right, so there we go. We see a jump to around 75 degrees. Initially, we'll see where it kind of settles. But that'll kind of be the test. First of all, at idle, uh, will we be able to get anywhere close to 30 degrees Celsius with our DIY thermal paste? And under load, honestly, my goal is just to prevent the computer from overheating and thermal throttling. Because with real thermal paste, you can see it's going to settle around, you know, 80 degrees, let's say. But now it's time to test the backyard thermal paste. Let's go ahead and get this cooler off. And remove that cooler. Let's clean off this existing thermal paste. The thing that's a little tough about this is these Intel Core Ultra CPUs. Well, I guess all of the ones for the sockets, they're just so long and we don't have that much homemade thermal paste to work with. That might be the one crux. Well, <laughs> that might be a crux. I think there's going to be multiple cruxes. Let's make sure we clean off the cooler as well. Very nice. All right, so now it's time to apply our homemade thermal paste, which at this point is quite literally uh, <laughs> mud, but it is mud with a dream. Like I said, it's uh, it's iron from the ground pulled up by a neodymium magnet and acorn oil. Uh, it looks a lot like dirt, because <laughs> it is. All right, let's reinstall this cooler. Now, hopefully I don't damage any of this because there are, you know, like there are still tiny little rocks in there, which even though I ground them up, right? Like they're still gonna be thicker and stronger than thermal paste, which has no rocks in it. But that said, we're still just going to tighten this cooler down as, as far as it'll go. Like I said, hopefully while also avoiding damage to it. This is honestly just like, uh, you know, crunchy thermal paste. You know how they have smooth and crunchy peanut butter? This is the, this is the crunchy variation. Not getting too much resistance as of right now. You know, I think if we hadn't ground up the, the paste a little bit, or if we hadn't ground up our iron extract a little bit, then, well, maybe we would have, be having some more issues, but we're not in the clear yet. The other potential issue is that oil does evaporate at certain heats, and that's where like silicone is, is beneficial to use in thermal paste as a base, because it can handle higher temperatures. It, like this oil could very well evaporate at like 80 degrees Celsius, in which case, if we end up going under load and going above that temperature, realistically, our base could just disappear which would not be ideal. Will that happen? Well, time will tell. All right, I actually was able to get this fully tightened down, which a little, little uh, surprised by, but there we go. All right, let's fire this up. Oh, oh no, okay. So uh, fired up, our CPU temperature under no load, mind you, is 67 degrees Celsius. That is over double the, the temperature um, of, compared to normal thermal paste. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's gonna come down. I will say 66 degrees Celsius under no load is far better than using no thermal paste at all. If we're comparing it against nothing, which is maybe a better alternative to test it against, we're actually doing fantastic. Because if we had no thermal paste, we, we would be thermal throttling right now, for sure. Okay, should we, <laughs> should we put the computer under load? I mean, it's definitely gonna overheat, but we might as well. Okay, let's go. Let's open up that Prime 95. All right, time to see what damage this can do under load. 105. Ah!